Hi everyone, my name is Zach, ZachariasWineHurry.com and in this video I want to show you 14 tips to work faster with Blender's user interface. These are 14 tips I nearly use every day, so in my opinion they are very very useful. So without further words, let's get started. Tip number one. If you look at the basic interface of Blender, there are many open panels. So this option here is one panel and you can see in every menu we have a lot of those panels. And if all of them are open, this can be quite disturbing. So you can simply hold down left click and drag and drop down the menu. You can see all the panels will be collapsed. This works everywhere we have panels. And also this works the other way around. If all the panels are collapsed, you can left click and drag and drop and all the panels will open. Tip number two, also working with panels. If you don't just want to collapse all of them, you can hold down control and left click on any panel you like. And you can see that only this panel stays expanded and all the others collapse automatically. So I just hold down control and left click on the panels I like to work with. Tip number three, working with drop-down menus. Blender's user interface has many drop-down menus as you can see here, all these dark gray buttons. If I click on them, we have many options and some of those has a lot of options like here, the look option in the color management panel. And if I render this simple monkey here and I want to test for example some different looks. I don't need to click through all of them like this because this will take a long time. I simply can hold down control and scroll on my mouse wheel and you can see it changes the options from the drop down menu. Tip number four. Sometimes when you have a lot of editors open it can happen that you can't access all the options from the header of the different editors. Like here you can see some of the buttons are behind the other editor. Certainly you can change the size of the editor, but if you don't want to do that, you simply can click the mouse wheel and move your mouse. And with this trick, you easily can move the headers around. Tip number five, working with the tabs. Sometimes it's really annoying because you have one panel in one tab that you use in combination with panels in other tabs. So and if you don't want to switch between those tabs all the times, you simply can hold down shift, left click and click on one panel and you can see this pin here. Now this panel is pinned and you can see it shows up in all other tabs as well. So you can do it with all the panels you use very often and if you don't want to have this anymore, simply shift left click on this panel again. Tip number six, changing three values at once. In many cases we have these three values listed here, for example for the location x, y and z and if you want to change them all at once, you simply hold down left click, drag and drop release the mouse button and then you can enter any value you like or you simply can hold down the left click and move your mouse and you can see I can change all the three values at once. I use this very often if I want to set these values to zero for example. Tip number seven, you can use math in any field. You can enter numbers. For example here, if I want to divide this by two or multiply this by two, I simply can enter this here, press enter and we have the result. Tip number eight. If I add, for example, a Boolean modifier, we have this field where we can enter a target object. We also can click on this eyedropper symbol here and click on the object we like. This is a cool trick, but we can do it even faster. If I hover the mouse over this field, I simply can press E and then you can see we have this eyedropper icon and then we can click on the object. Very easy and very fast. Tip number nine, drag and drop materials. 
if I have selected this monkey here, for example, and I want this one material also be applied on these two other monkeys, I simply can hold down left click on this material library button and drag and drop it onto the other objects I would like to have the same material on. Tip number 10, pie menus. Yeah, I guess many of you know the pie menus, but I want to show them anyways. So if you want to switch between, for example, the modes here, you either have to click on this button down here or you can press tab. But with tab, you can only switch between object mode and edit mode. Or if you have ever entered another mode like sculpt mode, you can switch between edit mode and sculpt mode. But yeah, this is not so convenient because we can't switch between all the modes very fast. And because of that, we go to the user preferences, search for Pi, and we can use this Pi menu, UI Pi menu official. So if you have enabled this, you have more options you can enable here. And if you enable all that, we can see we have different keys we can use right now. So save this user settings if you want to keep this. And now you simply hold down tab, for example, and you can see now all the modes we can enter. And now just drag your mouse in the direction of the mode you like to enter, for example, edit mode, and release the tab button. And so you can switch very fast because if you know the position of all these modes, you can enter edit mode, sculpt mode and so on very easily and very fast. And this is extremely helpful if you are working with a graphics tablet. Also, there are different keys. For example, if you press Z, you have the different display modes like wireframe, solid, material or rendered. And there are some other hotkeys with this pie menu you can see in the user preferences. Tip number 11. If you're working with a manipulator, for example, you may know that you can switch them down here for rotating, scaling and changing the location. And if you don't want to switch between all those buttons all the time, you simply can hold down shift to enable all these manipulators at once. And now you can rotate and move and even scale the monkey at the same time. This also works in edit mode. For example, if you have these three options down here, vertex selection, edge selection and face selection, you also can enable all of them at once or just two options if you like. Tip number 12. If you click on different menus, you can see that some of the letters are underlined. And if you press these letters on your keyboard, you will switch immediately to this menu entry. For example, if I press S, I will switch to the sculpt mode. So I click here, press S and I'm in the sculpt mode. Also works on many different places. For example, the shaders in the Cycles render engine. If you press here to choose another shader, you can see we have many underlined letters here. For example, if I want to add a diffuse shader, I simply can press D. Or if I want to add a glossy shader, I press L. And with this simple trick, you can easily navigate through different menus. This also works on two levels. If I press Shift A to add objects, we can see that the categories have different letters. For example, I want to add a mesh, I press M. And now I want to add a cone, so I press O. And while working with Blender, you certainly have your most used menu entries, most used objects and so on, most used shaders. And with the time you remember what letter stands for which menu entry and then you can work very fast and efficient. Tip number 13. This one is a very cool one because you can change values of different objects at the same time. For example, if I 
select all the three objects, you can see the last object has a brighter outline. That means this one is an active object. And that means all the changes I do in the user interface, in the properties editor, for example, will only affect the active object. So, but if I click on this object, you can see that I have the same modifier on all the three different objects. And if I select all of them, I can simply hold down Alt, change the value, and you can see it will change from all selected objects. This also works anywhere else. For example, if I want to change the location, hold down Alt, change the location, and this works. If you want to enter another value, don't hold down Alt, simply click in this field, enter the value, then press Alt and enter. And this works. Also, if you, for example, want to change some settings anywhere else, for example, the display settings, just hold down Alt and click the checkboxes or buttons you would like to change. This is one of the coolest features ever, but yeah, it's also super basic and it should be in Blender much earlier. Tip number 14. If you have a scene with many different objects, distributed on different layers, you can see all these objects here in the outliner. And if you're working, for example, only on one layer with just a few objects, you still can see all the different objects and it's really hard to find which object is the one that I was using, except you select the different objects so that they are highlighted here in the outliner. To make the whole thing easier, you simply can click on all scenes up here and choose visible layers. That means that you now only can see the objects that are on the visible layers. So if I click here, for example, I can see all the other objects which are on this specific layer here. This makes the whole selecting process in the outliner much easier. Yeah, that's it with this video. I hope you liked it and learned a few things. If you have more such tips related to Blender's user interface, leave them in the comments below on YouTube so that more people can benefit from this if they're watching this video. And yeah, certainly tell your friends about this video, share it and so on. And if you want to support my work so that I can do more of these videos in the future, you can support me on Gumroad. Yeah, and if you want to improve your 3D skills, then join weeklyctchallenge.com. This is basically a place where you can enter a competition every week and win very, very useful prizes every week. So check out the website. The link is in the video description below. Yeah, that's it with this video. Hope to see you in one of my next videos. Bye.